E yei se tasi o whailonga, whailonga tawaloa e whaingoaina o le Sir Julius Vogel Award mo nisi o tusitala po o authors uh, i tutono New Zealand po Kiwi authors lea o lo o mawhai o na mawaina le nei whailonga ma lea o a whailonga ma yei i li poti mawa mai. Lea sa fa manui e ina se tasi o tama ita i sa moa le susunga ya Lani Wint Young i lea whailonga i le nei tausanga i se tasi o ana a tusi whaingoaina or the fire's caress. Well, the Nate I out, Lewa Mato for Atassi, Malisunga Yalani, if I tell of our two, Lani, the Nate I out for. Good morning, Lani. Good morning, and Silo for Lava. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule this morning to be with us now. First and foremost, Congratulations on an incredible accolade out of all the Kiwi authors you walked away with the Sir Julius Vogel Award for Fire's Caress. Now, can you tell us what was your reaction when you first received the news you won this award? Um, well, I was I was shocked to be honest. I knew that I had been shortlisted for my book, Fire's Caress, for best youth novel, but there's just you know, I mean, I didn't expect that that it would win. I think, uh, I believe this is the first time that a Samoan author has um, taken out an award uh, wow. in the Sir Julius Vogel Awards. So, I mean, I was very honored to to make the shortlist and Oka, just really surprised. So here in my house in Alafua, there was a lot of screaming and choo-hooing um, <laughs> when I heard the news and my family were like, what is going on? Yeah. That is so awesome, Lani. And before we carry on, can you let us know Samoa, your parents as well, because there's so many listeners who are tuning in, supporting you and just sharing their love for you. And they'll love to know where you're from. Uh, yes, so my father is Tua Pepe Felix Went, and he is um, from the villages of Nangai Folefanga, and his mother um, is also from Vayala, so by Patu family side. And my mother is Māori, she is from New Zealand, she's from a very small town of Patea, um, but she's been here in Samoa. She heard my father celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary this year, along with Samoa. And so she's, I think we can say she's Samoan as well. She's been here for that long. But yeah, those are my parents. And, and I'm right now living in town in Apia with my husband and my children. Oh, beautiful. Congratulations to your parents. 60th anniversary. What a celebration. Now, Lani, this is your sixth book in your Telesa World series. What inspired you to write this series? Um, well, for this one, I had been listening and watching. There were some really amazing stories, reports coming out from the National University of Samoa. They have an archaeology program. Mm. And so their students have been carrying out archaeological digs and excavations, both in Savai and also here on the um, Ru'upolu. Mm. And they have been finding amazing well, to me, it's just fascinating. Uh, basically, they've been finding and unearthing the remnants of vast, well, I guess you could call them cities, mm. um, both in Savai and, and over here in Upolu. And, and every time they would, you know, have all these pictures that, uh, of these platforms that they were finding, walls, roads. And so to me, that just really sparked my imagination. And I started thinking about, well, the people who, who used to live there and, and um, what that community must have been like uh, mm -hmm. so many hundred years ago, hundreds of years ago here in Samoa. And so for me, thinking about that, that is what kind of took me along this journey of writing this book, which is set in contemporary Samoa, mm -hmm. but have this sort of mystical other world that is in an alternate reality that's happening at the same time. And um, it's from, yeah, seeing these reports from the archaeology students. Did you feel a big responsibility when trying when conveying these stories through your uh, through your novel your your uh, book? I think definitely. Um, I, I'm very mindful that there are not many of us mm -hmm. um, that are, are telling stories from Samoa, and so sometimes that weight of responsibility it can be a bit suffocating, mm -hmm. and you have to put that aside. 
because you know you can start worrying and, and thinking um with this kind of burden of responsibility you want to make sure that you're you're telling the stories right mm. that you are being a worthy representation and sometimes that can can kill the creativity so worrying about you know your auntie your grandmother your pastor <laughs> and everybody else who who's sort of breathing over your shoulder. So I kind of sometimes have to put all those voices aside and just tell the story. Speaking of, now I read that your first published Telesa book back in, uh, was back in 2011. You faced rejection, but here you are, 11 years later, recipient of the Sir Julius Vogel Award, not to mention the many other achievements that you've received. Can you share a little bit about your journey? Um, thank you for that. Yes, yeah, so... Um, when I submitted my novel, Telesa, to many different publishers in Australia, New Zealand, and America, um, I, I was very excited, very hopeful. Um, and as it started getting re these rejections, that was quite discouraging. Mm. But I'm very fortunate um, in, in the husband that I have, in Darren. Um, my husband is, is a very practical man, and he had not read my book, but he was like, well, if they don't want to publish your book, let's just publish it ourselves. Yes. And, you know, then we'll distribute it ourselves. Why not? And, um, you know, very, <laughs> just a, a man who, who gets things done. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with his encouragement and his belief, uh, we did. We, we took out a loan on our home and we printed books and, and got them out there. And, and it, it started from there. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for him um, because sometimes we artists, we can kind of get caught up in, in being creative and, and worrying when, oh, this is not going to work. And then you have a man like Darren, who's uh, a builder and, a, and an engineer who just says, nah, let's just do it. Uh, I love that. that. And what a reminder for the many who are listening, you know, never give up, keep on going and have a great support system because, yeah, we are so grateful that you continued. I mean, imagine if you did not. Well, we don't want to imagine that. Uh, now, did you always know that you were going to be a writer from a young age or does something like a life event happen where you were like, OK, this is my calling? Um, I've always been a big reader. And so always been very lost in the world of stories. And as you know, growing up in Samoa, there, there weren't a lot of books. Um, mm. that it was hard to get access to new books and so, um, or even books for children. So I was, you know, reading all these grown up books and very old books and, um, uh, but I loved telling stories. And so this was before TV and internet and Netflix. So I was the, the storyteller for my brothers and sisters. Mm. And so I'm the one who would tell them the stories. And so it just translated quite easily to, to writing. Um, but it was my father, um, my dad, who was always quite firm and uh, with me that, that I was going to be an author. And he knew that even before I did. And um, he had to wait a long time. I mean, I think I was, I was 37, 38 before I did my first book. But um, it's really wonderful to, when you have a parent who, who really has that belief in you and that hope oh, for you even before you do. That is so good. Now, in your journey as a writer, have there been any challenges as a Tama'ita in Samoa, Maori, um, in your career so far? And how are you able to overcome these? Yeah, I, I think that anytime you you tell a story, whether it's your own personal story or uh, when, whenever you speak, uh, I think whenever you speak, you are going to find people who agree with what you're saying and support it. And then you are always going to have, have people who disagree, who are unhappy, who feel challenged and perhaps threatened mm -hmm. by what you have to say. And I have encountered that. And I think that it's so important that I think, especially for Pacific women, for Samoan women, mm. um, sometimes it can be a lot harder, a lot tougher, I think, for Samoan women to speak their voice and to tell their stories. And I think it's on all of us to help create safe spaces in our homes, our mm. schools and communities, so that we can nurture um, that confidence in our Tsumaitsai Samoa so that we can encourage them to be able to have the strength to speak up, um, even if not everybody's going to like what you have to say.
Oh, definitely. I love that encouragement. And speaking of encouragement, is there any advice that you received in your career that you are like to pass on to anyone who's listening, who wants to be maybe a writer or is looking at starting a career? Like, what would you like to share with them? Um, well, I always go back to um, my great auntie Ita. Um, she was a very fierce, ferocious um, older woman, and she's the one who named me. She gave me my middle name, which is Porto. Um, many people like to say, no, I'm just Fia Porto, not Porto. <laughs> but um, yeah, my auntie Ita was was very a very strong woman, and she would always say to me, you know, Lani, um, are you reading your Bible? Have, have you learning your multiplication? Um, and then she would just tell me, Lani, you have to fight. You have to fight mm. for what you want. And um, I, I just remember this this wizened little old lady. Um, she would sit there and shake her fist at me, you know, and, and say, you must not give up and you must not let anyone make you scared. Mm. And um, I think that that's something that's always stayed with me. I mean, she's long gone now and, and I'm I'm old. But I think that that, 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 that message... Um, is something that has stayed with me always that it is important to to be strong and to have courage and to fight when necessary. What a beautiful and timely reminder. And we thank you for fighting. Thank you for never giving up and smashing those glass ceilings for the many other Tamaitai Samoa who are yet to come and come through as writers because I know they can look up to you and be like, well, Lani did it, I can do it too. On that note, Lani, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up? Um, well, I'd just like to thank you again for this opportunity. Um, I think any any time that, that we can um, take our voices um, to our community a bit wider through programs like this is, is a big help. And um, I'm really excited because um, my new book, Matalulu, which is a collection of stories that I did with my young daughter, mm. um, has just also been released. And so I'm really excited for this because my daughter's 14. She did the pictures and helped with the stories. And so I think jointly our message is, you know, it doesn't matter how old or how young you might be. Uh, it's never too early or too late to, mm. to, to be a writer and to tell stories. Beautiful. Thank you so much again, Lani, for taking the time out of your day to be with us on Radio Samoa. We look forward to hearing and reading the Matalulu uh, book as well as uh, future Telesa World Series um, novels that you are going to release. Um, but on that note, thank you so much. Uh, blessings and have a beautiful day. Thanks very much. Thank you, Lani.